my name's Carly. Um, I'm making a uh, terrarium today and I thought I would just go over the basic um, rules of how we make them here. So first of all you need to choose your glassware. I've chosen this lovely um, terrarium which has a lid, um, it also has a light fitted in this one um, and um, we're going to plant this one up. Okay, I've laid all the piece, bits and pieces out that I'm going to need to make life easier um, and I'm going to go through it bit by bit of what we use and, and why. Um, first of all, we use um, some gravel. It can be small gravel um, and we want a whole layer of this and this is to create a drainage layer so that when you water your terrarium, any excess water won't um, flood your plants. It will go through to this drainage area, um, which is good because you don't want um, your plants to be over watered. Um, you want it nice equal layers and that's plenty for a terrarium this size. The next layer is a moss layer. Um, I'm using sphagnum moss today, um, and this is absolutely fine um, for the use in, in terrariums such as these. Um, you want to make sure it goes all to the edges and covers the layer of stones completely. This is to create um, a barrier between the compost and your stones so they don't all mix in together, and also it will help retain moisture within the terrarium. Um, the next thing we do is we get um, a small amount, a very small, like a teaspoon size amount of activated charcoal. Um, we sell this here and it acts as a little filter to um, take all the toxins or as many toxins out of the water as possible and it will help um, the, your terrarium to remain um, clean and not go stagnant. That's perfect and you only need a tiny little amount. So you could take sort of a small pinch, about a teaspoon's worth sprinkle it over the moss layer and that's absolutely plenty. The next thing we do is um, we take our, our compost. Now the plants that I'm um, using are uh, wet loving so they like to have plenty of water so I'm using um, a compost that is suitable for those house plants. I've also mixed in some perlite again to assist with the drainage because in a terrarium there is obviously going to be no drainage at all other than the stones in the bottom. Um, so do a nice thick layer uh, making sure that your compost is thick enough to hold the plants that you've chosen. Um, deep enough, should I say. So you do a nice thick layer. Again, cover the whole moss layer so that you can't see any moss at all at this stage. Okay, and then if you look from below, you will start to see the layers going from drainage to moss to compost. Okay, now the next stage is we want to plant up our plants. I've chosen these three lovely house plants. They are bambino little plants, so they're very, very small, which is what, what you want to start off, because eventually nearly all plants will outgrow a terrarium, but the smaller they are to start with, then obviously the longer that will take. Um, I've gone for a lovely little chlorophytum, which is a spider plant. I'm going to put that in first. What we do is we just tease the plant out, and then we actually use the pot, the empty pot, to make an indent in the compost. Now we, you can be quite rough, you just make sure that it goes the whole depth of the pot near enough. And so then you're left with the pot in there, like that. You do the same for all three plants. This sort of size terrarium will take three comfortably. Um, you could probably put an additional one in, but I like each plant to have a bit of space to grow and you don't want to cram them in there's a chance you could lose the fourth one if you put too many plants in. Okay, so you put the empty pots in and that gives you a chance to arrange them how you think you would like the plants to be. Okay, but more importantly, when you then remove the plant pot, it leaves the plant-shaped hole ready for you to just pop your plant into it. That way, you're not disturbing all the layers of the terrarium, you're not um, damaging the plant roots, Anything like that, you don't have to push them into the soil because there is already a hole made for your plant to go into. Now obviously you can always give it a little bit of pressure, make sure it doesn't go, it's not going to fall over. And then do the third and final one, which is this lovely Hyperestes, which is going to go at the back. Again, there's already a space for it that's been made, a little bit of pressure. And if you find that it's not quite deep enough, then by all means add a little bit more compost just to um, make sure that the root ball is completely covered. You don't, want, you don't want it to be higher than the compost, okay? 
So you've got your plants arranged and they are nice and firmly in position. Okay, and then the next bit, most people find the fun bit, and that's to decorate the top. Um, now I've got a few bits and pieces here which I'm going to decorate uh, this terrarium with. I'm going to make it quite a natural terrarium, a bit woodlandy. So with that in mind, I've gone for lots of decorative wood. Um, some of this is orchid bark. Anything really that you would like to decorate your terrarium with. Lots of people use stones, people use shells. Um, anything really that you feel would be a nice decorative topping for your plant. Um, again, with this one, um, it is a woodland style one that I'm going for. Um, hence the wood chips on the bottom. Now, although they do look lovely, but they all, they are also going to act as a barrier so, to, so to prevent it from drying out. Um, so when you water this, the wood will protect the top and prevent it from drying out too much. And then a last few finishing touches, some nice big stones. So if you've had a little walk in the woods. This really is a personal preference to how you'd like to decorate them. Okay, and then it's all done for the planting. And then what you would do is you would take a uh, watering can and just water around the inside of the glass and that will water it for the first time. Once it's watered, pop the lid on and keep that lid on because what it will do is as the flowers in there breathe, they will create condensation and then a rain type effect and it basically will create its own little atmosphere in there hopefully not requiring hardly any water at all from the minute you make it um, and that's it, that's a terrarium for you